Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to part two. I'm Marcus from Astro Auto Repairs. Can you dig it? <laughs> uh, all right, today, our customer. The car, man, the car. Oh, <laughs> oh this is 2008 A6 Audi. 3.2 Quadro engine. All right, today, uh, our customer, he's purchased the hub assembly. The dealership want three hundred dollars for three hundred dollars for this hub assembly, but our customer got it. No, no, no. Hub. Oh, for the hub, but it's I. For, for the, the hub. Oh. Take out the bag. <laughs> man, I can't see you see it, man. No, 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 yeah, no, no, just hold it up to the, you know, up here. So, right. yeah, 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 not too close, thank you. <laughs> Good, go ahead. All right, what, I, what happened? And uh, our customer, want? uh, the dealership wanted $300 for it. But, no, 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 for what? Oh, for the hub assembly. No. I told you, man, off camera. The hub. The hub. Just for the piece, the front part is the hub. Well, from the front, from the hub. No, no. <laughs> look, look, look. All right. This is the hub right here. This just this part right here. Just this part I'm spinning. Yep. That's the hub, and this is the bearing back here. So the dealership wanted three hundred dollars just for this part right here. All right. Now go ahead and do that. Try that. The dealership wanted three hundred dollars just for this. For well, just for this part right here, but my customer what's got that it. What's the part called? The hub. And what's the back part called? The sim. Bearing. The bearing. All right. But our customer, he he got real real cheap for one hundred and twenty four dollars, and from uh, eBay. From eBay, and uh, me and Tim about to get our tools right, and we right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Last time we left off, we have uh, we just put the tire just back on, just screwed it back on a little easy, and we left the jet stand here. So we just put the jack, we just put the jack up just till it touches a little bit. We don't have to push it all the way up because the jack stand still here. 17 millimeter deep so socket. Deep socket. That's just. You take the tire back off. Uh, now I'm gonna just uh, take the tire back off. way of doing that because as you're taking it off the tie is coming out this way so take one hand just hold it in hold it in a little bit and as you go to the top you can just let it go a little bit let the bottom go and Next, we will take our hits. What size? 17. 17 millimeter hits uh, socket. So socket. And we will take off the center bolt. The center bolt of the, it's between the inside the hub. Damn, it's in there tight. Come on, thing, they won't tight. Tight. The socket he's using is a half inch drive. And, uh, it shouldn't be tight. No, no, that's the way. That's the way. Did we put it that tight before? I guess so. I can't so. even tell Way. All right, we got that unbolted right now. So next thing we're gonna do is get this. There's our whole hub assembly right there, 
And what I'm going to do is turn this wheel a little bit. Because now what we're going to do is just get that, get that axle out there like this. And this thing actually came apart last time. Can you see that? That's good. Yeah, see all right. So we got that off. This, as you can see, it's all messed up. That whole shaft should be shiny just like that. It should not come out of this new one. So now we're going to do, we're going to see if we can back this axle up enough. Because what we got back here is uh, four bolts. And uh, thanks to Sauce Boss, let me, matter of fact, let me show you the, the socket we're going to need. Uh, we'll be right back. All right, here we go. We're in the back of the spindle. Here's the axle. And to take this hub assembly out, we got four bolts. Here's two over here. Then there's going to be two on the other side. You sure you can hold that light, man? You got it, man? Don't be giving me no bad shots, man. All right, now what these call thanks to Sauce Boss. He had a, uh, because I thought, now here is the socket to do this. And I called it spline sockets. And he let me know that they're called triple points. <laughs> and uh, I looked them up uh, triple point spline sockets uh, that's what you're going to need to take these out I don't know why they do it I have no idea guys why can they put a hex bolt in there I have no idea but we got a 12 point uh, triple point <laughs> spline socket 12 millimeter and what I'm going to do here is instead of disconnecting the lower control arm or the upper control arm to swing this out we're going to leave all this axle in here and we're going to get this done from here. Now what I'm going to do is go up here and I'm going to get this socket into there just like that and you see I'm wiggling it because I want to make sure that it's, that it's in there tight. I'm going to get my half inch drive ratchet. Uh oh. Dang it man. Look at this mess right here. As you can see uh, my ratchet it's hitting up against the socket. Not me, man. Look at that, man. I'm pointing up there. You, you, I got you, get, you got it? Yeah, hey, I, I, hey, I got go it. Ahead, go I'm ahead. about to break my shoulder. Break your shoulder for what, man? What? Boy, this boy, man. All right. So what I'm going to have to do is, because my ratchet is hitting up against here. So what I'm going to do is take my spindle, and I'm going to turn it so... My socket now is over here, and I can get my ratchet in here, and, oh my goodness, this thing's tight. There we go. Okay, take my ratchet off. And I'm taking this bolt out of here. Man, this thing is still coming. There's all that dirt in here. Now, also notice that on these sockets, on these triple point spline sockets, there are short ones as well. So a short one might be able to fit better in here. And the ones I got, it's uh, long, the long shank on them. Right, and there's one bolt, and this, you see the splines in there. That's one. Okay, now we got our second one down below it, and I'm gonna keep my spindle turned over this way. I'm gonna get my socket in there. Yeah, make sure that it's tight in there so you don't need the light no more you get it nope. okay tell me that before all right get my half inch drive ratchet in here and I'm using one finger or to keep this over here my, well actually my hand over here I'm using, keeping this to keep that spline in there because you do not want to strip that out all right There we go.
very important make sure that socket is in those splines because again you strip them out you are in trouble all right now we got two of them out okay there's our second one and check them just to make sure they are the same length and all of them probably going to be the same length all right now we're going to go over here to the other side Let's try to get this top one up. Where is that? There it is right there. You can still see that? Yep. All right. Make sure it's in there. Get our ratchet because I swing our calp out the way a little bit. All right. Hold it in there. They both are tight. All right. Also, be careful of this sensor up here, your ABS wheel speed sensor. Make sure you don't hit the wire or anything up there. You cut that up. Again, definitely go to eBay for this part. Again, just like Marcus said, it's like $300 just for the hub at the dealership. Nobody else has that hub. All right, now we're gonna pick our axle up. We're gonna go down here to our last bolt. Make sure it's in there. Now this was cool because we was able to get to these bolts without having to remove the lower control arm or the upper control upper control well not moving removing the, the uh, control arm itself but separated from the joints all right now we got all bolts out let's see here eh, this thing won't come out at all all right you can come on out here marcus and what we're going to do guys and girls i'm going to get me get me a because this thing is like in there so we're going to Get us a hammer. Matter of fact, what I might do here, let's try something here. Just out of curiosity, if I put these bolts in backwards like this. Oh man. All right, so I'm gonna get me a hammer, a little hammer, and we're gonna try to knock this thing out of there. Very bad. All right, got my little carpenter's hammer. Now what I'm trying to do is try to hit, I'm gonna try to hit this and get this to loosen up and come out. If not, I'm going to have to turn the spindle, put something in the back, and try to knock it out. Yeah. That ain't working. <laughs> that is not working. So it's like all of like in, in one part, right? Huh? I said it's, it looked like it's all in one part, but it, what, what we know is not. Yeah, we know it's not. So now we gotta get something back here and try to knock this out. Ah, be right back. All right, got this little bar. I forgot where I got this bar from. This actually used to be threads right here, and this, the tool got all messed up, so I now use it as a big punch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this spindle as much as I can over here. Put this between the axle. And if you can look right between here. You can see a tool right there. You see that? Yep. So what I'm gonna do is take my hammer. You know what? Is that moving? This thing's got a hold over here, man. How the heck can I get this thing? You know what? Check this out. This is what I'm gonna do, guys, because I, I need this spindle turned all the way over here. So what I'm gonna do is move this over here. Put our outer tie rod in there. There. Alright. 
just to hold this over to the side for me. What I'm gonna do is just Place. Now let's get my tool back here. And let's see if we can get this thing out of there. I might have to get a bigger hammer. You know, maybe this is too long. I can't get a swing on this. trying my little chisel here, big chisel here, because again, we don't care about that too much. <laughs> Yo, this sucks. <laughs> that thing sucks, man. That thing don't like it's moving or anything. <sighs> Alright, let me go get a bigger hammer. I'll be right back. All right, got me big hammer now. Let's get some. Whoa. <laughs> Make sure let's tighten this up a little bit better. I got that tied up more out of the way. Get a little better. Did I move any? Dang, guys, it don't even look like I even budged. This sucks. You didn't make it dinner. At least it don't look like it, man. It don't look like it. Boy, it's a bit. Some ideas, Marcus. What the heck, man? I'm gonna get this thing out of here. Is that thing that rusty in there? Is it that rusty? I'm gonna let Marcus come up with some ideas. Try to get like the uh, right up in here. Oh, this, this right here. Huh? So, on it. Oh, unless we can, yeah, if we can get a chisel right now, how about we get a little chisel and try to stick right in there and try to like work it out, huh? Because this one might be too big to go in there right now. Yeah. Oh, actually, it is. And it get is. the hammer just. Let me see. Something. <laughs> but actually, I think it's working. Yeah, I see it moving. Huh? I see it moving. You see it moving? It's, 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 it's I'm gonna get a flathead and pop that out, man. You, man, see how tight see, this is? you know how tight this is, man. How, okay, you get a flathead and tie, tap it out. <laughs> Good. 
Good. We're definitely making some progress here. Definitely making some progress. Now here comes Marcus with a screwdriver. He gonna show us that he can just pop that out. Let's get it a little closer here. Up my screwdriver. That ain't gonna, no, man, that ain't see, gonna you, go you, in there. You see this look? Clip it right ain't here. gonna open up in there, man. I don't want no screwdriver. It's gonna break the tip of my screwdriver. Why can't we just do. Oh, how about this? You know where the chisels are? We get a smaller chisel. There we go. There we go. There we go. We don't need no Marcus. We got this. Got it. Do I got it, man? Nashville, man. Do I got it? <laughs> yeah, so I got it. No, I ain't got it yet. <laughs> uh, hold on. I think we got it. Yeah, we got it. It's coming out. Ding, ding, dong. Dang. <laughs> Here we go. Thing is out. The thing was really, really in there. Man. Whew. Hey, look at this. This thing. Oh, I'm about to say the sensors on. Hey, let me see that new one. Uh, Cause I'm looking at the back, and you notice how this one has the teeth to pick up for the wheel speed sensor. And you can see damage. You can see the messed up part up here. That's because we're using a chisel. So I want to make sure that this is for ABS. Also, it should be. All right. Now what we're gonna do. We're gonna get our air out here. We're gonna take our wire wheel. We're gonna clean all this up inside, so this thing can uh, go back in with no problem. All right, we'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, first thing, before I put the hub on, I want to clean out all this old, well, I always wanted everyone, everything to make it smooth, but I, but it's, it's really old. Rusty. Real rusty. But before I do that, I want to take off the ABS the ABS uh, sensor. Wheel speed sensor. You, can, you got it. Wheel speed sensor because you guys look in here. If I take the the wire, the wire wheel, and go and grind it through it, it's, it will hit this, and I don't want to damage it. So I want to take a five millimeter hex socket with a quarter inch drive. Got it. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now I want to take off the ABS sensor. It look kind of easy if I just. Mm. And just easily just slide right out. Wow. I don't want to lose any of my tools. What kind of boat is it? Okay. What boat it is. I don't want to lose anything, but I would put it back up in here, but it might drop right out. So put it back in here. Yeah, so I'm just put it back up in here. Alright. This is my wire wheel. 
my wire wheel. Uh, if you don't use, if you don't have this, you use a wire brush. Easy, simple, easy. You want to move the axle, axle out your way. But, but I, I, but I, I rather you use. Better, you can do that better. You didn't even do nothing. <laughs> That thing ain't going on. Right. See? There you go. You might have to use an angle, but you can definitely use a wire brush. Get a smaller one, be even better. Yeah. And guys, girls, check it out. That's all you have to do is go up to this point right there. That's where the bearing sets in at, right there. All right, go ahead. But now, I want, in case you guys have a, have a wire wheel, hook it up to the air. Let that button go, man. Yeah, right. Cut the finger off. Before I do this, I want to give me some sippy goggles because I ain't trying to go to the hospital later on the day. Be right back. Have a look. <laughs> All right, so you definitely want to use some safety goggles because these little these bristles, these little bristles can pop out, put you right in the hospital. All right, let's get to work. Move this out the way a little bit. Used to that, mm -hmm. use both hands to keep to have more control until you get used to it. Like this? Yeah. Guys, guys, next thing Marcus is gonna do, Marcus is gonna get a little white lithium grease. We're just gonna put on the shaft just a little, or better yet, we're gonna take our new hub assembly and he's gonna put some right inside there. That's just to keep that lubricated um, so it don't rust, get rusty in there and stick. All right, we'll be right back. All right, I'm gonna, uh, I got my white lithium grease. 
I don't want to mess my gloves up, so I use one of the tilts from Manic Mechanic 007. It says, uh, get a like a Q tilt. Just smear it on. Manic Mechanic 007, he's been with us for a long time. He has offered us great tips on Man, repairing on cars. Uh, also, his name is Len. Len, what's up? Go around the spleen, shit, the spleen, splines. The splines. Get all up in there. Doing like you painting, man. Put that, put that piece up in there, man. Get some more, man. What the heck? Get some more. Yeah, there you go. I wanted to show. Oh, let's get this out of the way. Close that off. And... Just put that right on the top of it. Take that out of the way. All right. I want to uh, get a, get one hand on on my axle, so it's easy to be easier to uh, line up. So I want to take my hub. Is um. Make sure that you want to line the bolts, the bolts, the splines, the, the splines up to one another. Now there's so, no particular way, so you ain't got to worry about. As long as any of them line up, we good. All right, that's good. Cool. All right, so uh, I'm gonna get the bolts, and I'll be right back. All right, we're back, and what we're gonna do now is start off four uh, triple point spline sockets. We're going to start them in the back with a 12 millimeters, 12 millimeter triple point socket. We'll get in there like that. And what we're going to have to do here is actually take this axle back out so we can lean, get this, get these bolts in here. And we're going to turn this axle to make sure get these bolts lined up. I'm going to go toward the back. And you can see the bolt go right through there. And that's all I want to do is going in. Make sure it starts off by a couple threads. Get another one. And move our axle out of the way. Okay. And with that white lithium grease in there, it makes that axle easy to move around, come out and all. Everything good. Alright, that's two. I'll go over here to the top one. Okay, that's three. And then number four. Number four is the hardest one. All right, now that I know I got all four in there, we're gonna go ahead and tighten that up. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this a little bit easier. Instead of using my half inch drive wrench, uh, ratchet, I'm gonna get me a reducer from half inch to three eighths drive so I can use my smaller ratchet so I can bring that in quicker and then use my half inch to really tighten it up. All right, I'll be right back. All right, got my three eighths drive ratchet. And what I got here is a reducer. It takes from um, half inch drive down to three eighths. So that way I can get my ratchet down and my little one down in here. And uh, here, matter of fact, come on this side, you can see it better. Right then, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go bring this in till it stops. Is. You can see it's going in crooked, but I don't care. I'm not tightening it up yet. Okay, now I'm gonna go up here, move our axle out of the way, and go up to the top bolt now. Again, you want to make sure those splines are definitely lined up in there before you start doing that.
Castilla starts bringing them in. Okay, let's go around to our next one. Last one down here somewhere. Man, looks like we gotta get our axle and move our axle out of the way. got all that done now we know it's pretty much even and now we're gonna go ahead and tighten these up now I'm gonna have to move my axle out the way a little bit more on this one cuz it looks like uh, this one's really got a crooked angle there we go now I'm gonna get my half inch drive and we're gonna go tighten these up You don't gotta worry about stripping these out. These things are pretty tight. All right. Let's go up to our top one up here. Now you notice I'm taking one hand and holding it in. Right here is because I don't want to strip them bolts out. So you definitely don't want to do that. Let me do a little bit more on that. Okay. Go to the top one over here. Okay. And last but not least, pick our axle up. Get to the bottom one that we started with. Okay, we got that in. The next thing we're gonna do is take our axle, pop that right in. The axle is right in. That's great. The next thing we're gonna do, we got a long bolt that holds in the axle. 17 millimeter hex. I'm gonna put that bolt right there. Yeah, we're going there. Okay, we still got time. All right, we're gonna get our air gun. We got bolts. 17 millimeter hex. Go ahead and tighten that up. I guess we'll get a little bit more air in here and tighten this up, make sure it's nice and tight. Or if you got your half inch. There we go. All right, we're gonna change the battery in the camera. When we come back, Mark is gonna start putting everything else together. All right, we'll be right back. Welcome back. All right, so now I want to put back my ABS sensor back. I'll be using, uh, once again, I'll be using a five millimeter hex socket with a quarter inch drive. We're all getting cut down to a good. <laughs> Slip right up in there. Lined up. You don't want to tighten it too tight because it's a small, small bolt. So you just want to, you just want to. Uh, 
turn it till it stops, then go back one more time with it. I wanted to use. Hold, hold, you wait till it clicked. It, it's, it ain't gonna go. It ain't gonna go all the way out. So we're not wait. Oh, okay, oh, okay, yeah. okay. That's tight then. Okay, okay, good. All right. <laughs> all right. So now I want to uh, put back, put on my back back okay. plate. Backing plate. You got backing it. Backing plate. Back. Oh, gonna uh, do what what you doing now? Uh, I'm uh, taking out the T30 T30 uh, bolts that we put in earlier. Yep. So in case we don't lose them, we put them bolts. Okay. Yep. Show sure is lined, lined up correct. I can't work today, man. These gloves look brand new. That's, that's why I don't I don't really get gloves like that. In the wintertime, they good, yeah. though. But I really don't feel nothing in my hands now. It's kind of cold out here, you guys. Man, you think this is cold? Wait. Okay, he's using a T30 torque socket. We're gonna go around and he's using the, the stubby ratchet because there's not a lot of torque in that. And these things ain't gotta be super tight because again, these are small bolts and you can uh, strip that thing or break it right off. So you're just gonna go till it stops and then tighten it just a little bit more. More than that though. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna get these four tightened up and we'll be right back. Okay, you're good. Let's get it. Alright, so the first thing I wanna do next is, thing, man. The next thing I wanna do is connect my tie rod back together. Outer tie rod. I, 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 tie rod. Outer. Outer tie rod. <laughs> I wanna <laughs> take out the nut nut and bolt. Key thing. When you're putting it back in, you want this side, the flat side, to be against, be facing this little indentation in, right there. Okay. Indentation right there. Then, you see this, uh, this see this little engrave. You want the, you want this to be facing out when you're putting the bolt, so because it won't move. So, all right, so. Uh, Tell me right. I'm gonna need your help. Um, now, what I'm gonna do here, I'm taking me a long, got me a long 3 8 drive extension. And what I'm gonna do is put it right here on the spindle. The reason why being, because see, I can turn this now, turn the whole spindle so he can get that lined up. So as I turn this out, Alright, 
about. Got this one up that way. Now sometimes you see how it gets stuck. Like right now he's stuck. What happens is now the joint might be up too far. So now what I gotta do is wiggle this a little bit and he's gotta bring the joint down a little bit at the same time I'm trying to get that bolt in there. Oh, that might be too far now. Try to go up now. At the same time. We gotta make sure, let's take it back out because we gotta make sure that that slot is facing towards there. Alright, so let's take that joint back down. Just a yeah, it's still, still facing right there. It's facing, it's gotta be facing exactly yeah. out towards right. there. Is it? You know, it looks like it's a little turning. Oh, yeah, turned that way. So we gotta take it out. Now, being that I'm right here, yeah, like exactly, just like that. You gotta make sure that turns. Make sure that's. Well, let me see if you got that. Cause I'm be out here like this. No, I'm gonna turn that back the other way, man. Oh, let me see that one here. Oh, right about there. Wow. All right, remember, make sure that's over there, that's that, that's great. And here, can we pick this up more? Can I go up more now that you got the bolt in there? Yep. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now we're gonna tighten that up. Let's see. Either 15 or 17. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Loose? Yeah. All right, got a 16 millimeter right there. What we're gonna do is tighten it up. Yeah, All right, I'll hold this in the place. You want to tighten that, you see that? Nice and tight. And what's a good idea, you know what guys, what's a good idea on this? I'm gonna loosen this back up. Because we still got a bolt to put on this. So we're gonna keep that loose. And we got a little 13 millimeter bolt. Remember that we took on the top? So that's gonna help you keep that joint up. So let's put that in there and tighten that up. So I brought that joint up. Now we can go ahead and tighten this up. You want to make sure this is nice and tight. And there we are. We're done with that. All right, we'll be right back. Okie dokie. All right, next thing, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take my rotor and I want to put it back on. But first, you want to make sure it's locked up so it's a little b hole right here. You want to make sure that's locked up with that one so you can put the screw into it. Now you gotta push it. Oh yeah. Here's my big people screw. 
don't see like too many of you working though. Come on, pick that road up, man. Stop. I lost them. There you go. <laughs> What's in there? What size is that boat? Uh, T27. Hold on. I got one thing on right. Because the issue ain't lining up here. Oh, you ain't got it. Right make sure all the loads are. Little bow holes are lined up, and actually, guys and girls, if you want to be sure it lines up when you finally tighten up, just take your lug nuts, just put them in there by a couple threads. That's it. All right, the other ones, too, man. Let me get another one over there on the other side. Or okay, tighten it up. All right. Okay. Next thing I want to do is uh, put on my caliber. Um, uh, caliber these, bracket. Caliber bracket. These is uh, I have two 21 socket. Um, 21 millimeter bolts. 21 millimeter bolts. Okay. That's a lot of M's in that word. What are them words? All right. So put the caliber bracket on. Make sure it's lined up right. There you go. <laughs> All right. So now, Head top ones in? Yeah, the top ones in. I just didn't push it all the way in there. Oh, okay, okay. Good. All right. Next thing, I want to use my air gun. What you got up there? Uh, 21 millimeter uh -huh. little socket. Socket and I have a little wobbly, wobbly. wobble ex wobble extension. Wobbly extension. A wobbly wobble, <laughs> wobble, man. Wobble. Just wobble. Wobble extension. Wobble extension. All right. <sighs> the calipers in your way. Yep. Alright, so let me see if I can pull this caliper out of the way. Okay. Alright, we got that done. The next thing we're gonna do is go for the Put the caliper on. So uh, we get set up, and we'll be right back. All right, got a good, good picture on that. Yep. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be putting the caliper back down there. Now, before we put the caliper down there, we noticed that it, there's some shiny spots right here. You see that? And that's because there's no grease up here, and that can cause a squeal. So what we're going to do is we call the 007 little trick we learned from Manic Mechanic 007 just like Mark explained to you a little bit while ago instead of putting grease on your fingers and all use a little q-tip and I'm gonna do is put some little grease up here and we're just gonna put it to the contact points right there so don't brake pads will slide really good you wanna make sure you don't get none on the rotor because then you go step on your brakes and they will not stop well on this wheel
All right, there you go. All right, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna unhook our caliper. Now, if you don't care about the wire, you can just cut it, be a lot quicker. We try to unwind it so we can save it for another time. Okay. Now we got that out right there. And you want to slowly take every, the whole assembly. Get this wire out of here. And you see where your brake pads are? The brake pads are right there. Make sure your sensor is over to the side. And we're going to just slowly lower it down. Onto the rotor. Great. All right. Now Marcus is going to take over. He's going to show you how we're going to bolt this up and finish this up. So we'll be right back. All right. Next thing, I want to put my bolts, my bolts back in the back. But you got to see where is it? No, I don't. No, no, show me where it's at. Wait, I can see a bunch oh. of stuff. <laughs> oh, you, you right, show. right there, a little dark hole right there. Okay. Yeah. One right there, and there's one right there. Okay. I will be using a. All right, I can see it. I'll be using a eight millimeter hex socket. And I will place in the screws up in. They might, you might gotta wig it around the line, to line it up. It ain't so easy, is it? No. Nah. Yeah, that's one. Okay. Now you want to make sure that you can put these in, turn these in by hand a, a few threads so in that way you know it's not going cross threaded and everything is going smooth. Alright. Alright, the next thing that you're going to use your, use your ratchet. Yeah, you put all the tools back, man. You put the ratchet over there? Mm. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. Not that one. <laughs> Take this extension off of there. Adapter. All right, what, you, what kind of ratchet you got? Uh, this is a three eighths drive. Right, he about to say Craftsman. And I'll about to say, I was really about to say, hey, hey, eighty four T. Okay. We're going to tighten them two bolts up and what you do is you tighten it up till they stop and then you just snug it up about um, a little bit more just to make sure it's nice and snug. Now what you want to do is as soon as that's like right there so he, now what Marcus could do right now is stop and go to the top one so you can make sure both going on equally. Okay we're going to tighten them up and then we'll be right back. Okay. Alright ladies and gentlemen these caps right here are called dust caps. So make so it stop dust dust from getting into them, and they just go right there where you put the bolt in. Ooh, and they just slip right in. And it's two of them. All 
All right, the next part is the kind of like difficult part. As we saw in the beginning, when we first started doing this job, there's a big retainer spring right here. That thing pops out, man. That thing hurts. That thing gonna hurt somebody. So, you know how to put it in or you want me to put it in? Uh, I might can put it in. All right, go ahead, man. Go ahead. See how it go. Go. Like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, hold, let me uh, let me show them something right here. Now you see, there's a little tab that's sticking out right there. What the tab gotta do is gotta go inside there. There you go. Now, here's where the problem comes in at. Now this is where the problem comes in, because at the same time, this clip's gotta go up under there to hold that caliper down. Yeah, how you gonna do that? Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Oh, that, that, that ain't down in there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is not really, this is not that easy. So, so you know, if, if Mark can let that thing loose, man, that thing will buzz me. Bow! <laughs> <laughs> no, you still off, man. You way yeah, off. Yeah, I'm trying to angle it up in there, but that thing ain't going all the way up in there. I feel like it's popping right in my face. <laughs> What's some help, man? Yeah, I ain't too afraid to ask for help. All right, the, uh, the thing here is that, guys, Marcus is using his own strength, and that's a lot of pressure on that spring. So the thing is, you gotta get yourself a screwdriver to pry that back. Now there's either you can try to work your way and do it that way, that ain't gonna work. You gotta actually just do it just like Marcus did. Line it up just like that. To where it's gonna go in. And now we're gonna oh well we'll see. Now see I can uh, mess I, I up. Can, I could do that by hand. <laughs> I, I just do that by hand. Did I just do that by hand? Damn, I got the camera on. Look at that. Pull that camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you could do it one hand. I thought you could do it one hand. Yeah. Alright, you got me on there. Alright. So we're gonna go right here. And I got it lined up with my uh with the slot right in there. Take my hand. Now it's still, it's still not lined up, but I ain't worried about that yet. Put my, bring that down like that. And I'm still not lined up right there, but that's all right though. Cause now, I can just probably get something right here and move that over. Man, that would've hurt. <laughs> yeah, all right, we're gonna get that. I'm gonna get that no matter what, man. Hold up with me here the other way. Why this thing man going in over there? Hold on man, all right, okay, all right, I got an idea. Let's push that piece down again. All right, now, my problem is I tried to hit it that way. What I gotta do is hit it this way. There you go, look at that. All right, that's done. Next thing we're gonna do, hook up our sensor over here. Well, and I don't know, this, this shouldn't have been loose like this, shouldn't have been out of this groove. So, and this, the, he did have brakes done, so I, you know, to fix that, now, they might have not put this back in. Uh, so we're going to put this back in like that. And then we're going to plug it up. Alright, and make sure no wires, everything is away from the rotor when it spins. We are done. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put the tie on, and we'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we put the tie on, I forgot to do this. We need to tighten up this nut right here. This is a very important part that you do not wanna skip, because you think you can tighten this up and that's it and done? No. Um, this bolt, 
has to be tightened up to a, um, it's actually, if you're going newton meters, it's 200 newton meters, then another 180 degrees. And 180 degrees, you figure 360 degrees is all the way around. 90 degrees is quarter of the way. So then 180 is going to be halfway. So we got to tighten this up. Now we're going to go this into foot pounds. Foot pounds is 147 foot pounds. So I got to tighten this bolt up to 147 foot pounds, then another half turn. That is going to be super tight. So that's going to be almost impossible to do with this car up in the air like that. So we're going to forget about it and let the customer worry about it. Now let me stop. We're not going to do, <laughs> we're not going to do that. What we're going to do here is we got us a nice thick screwdriver. And this rotor, they're called vented rotors. Because if you look on the top up here, it's like vents in them. So now being that we're going to be turning clockwise, we're going to put this screwdriver into there. And while we're tightening up, this screwdriver is going to lock up against the caliper bracket. So we're going to stop it from turning. And also what helps is the tires down the other side. Now and also in order to do this, we're going to turn the wheel all the way to the right so we can push down and really get some uh, torque on that. Alright, so we're going to turn the wheel all the way to the right and we'll be right back. Alright, here we go. Now, got our little screwdriver over here. Stick it in there. Alright, Marcus got his torque wrench. It's already set to 147 pounds. I don't know what he's doing. I have no idea what Marcus Whoa. is doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> right now, the, torque, the way the torque wrench works is you set it to where you need it to set it for. And this is set right now at 147 foot pounds. And then as he's tightening up that bolt, he's keep tightening until that, until that uh, torque wrench clicks. Oh, wait a minute, that was it? Yeah. You know what? Here, 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 take that out of there for a minute. I gotta make sure that, cause we tighten this up, but we gotta make sure, hold this a minute. All right, that, we reached that too quick. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen this bolt up. But I did tighten it up with an earthquake and this thing got a super torque on it. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna have to loosen this up. All right, watch out. All right, there we go. Now, loosen that up. Make sure I'm set at 147, which we are. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna show you up here. Let me make sure you can get those. Can you get the numbers and all? All right, so what I do is back up, and right there, I'm at 140. There's 140, there's a line down there, and then on the bottom, what I did keep going, turning it, there's 146, and there's 147. Then I'm going to take the back of it, lock it into place. All right, Marcus, give me the camera. And Marcus is going to tighten that up. Until that clicks. Hold on, let me get this screwdriver up in here. All right, go ahead. And slow, slow, cause it then it'll click. All right, now he just tightened it up to where it's supposed to be. Now what we're gonna do is take the tool out, and now we're gonna get a mark, a marker, and put right on the top, and then let him know that he's got to turn all the way to the other side. All right. We'll be right back. All right, now Marcus is going to mark it right on the top. Right here. All right, and yeah, it's over there. So now, after we tighten it up now, that mark has to be down here. So, and that's what we could do. Give me the marker. Take that cap off a minute. And the rotor might turn a little bit, but he's going to be looking to go in that area. That's 180 degrees. All right, put that back on. Okay, we're gonna get our snap on. Now let's put this snap on half inch ratchet to use. This one we use, the torque wrench, is a great neck. So we're gonna get our other uh, ratchet, half inch drive snap on ratchet, and we're gonna turn that 180 degrees. Be right back. All right, 
All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take off my socket bolt and switch it over to this. Well, you know what? I'm not gonna have enough leverage, so I'm gonna use the jack handle for leverage. Screw it, Slip it out. in there, so I don't want to use, fit, that's right, ready? Yeah, man, I'm ready. Man, you weak, man. Yeah. You got all that leverage, you still can't turn that? Go a little bit higher. Man. It's, it's a ratchet, man, you can turn... Look at this guy, man. Look at this guy. Look at him. Yo, you want me to do that, man? Do you, you even do that? Yeah, I'm in the air, no. Yeah. I can't believe this. This guy, he was up in the air. Here, here, man. All right. Go ahead, Hercules. Yeah, yeah, here we go. We're gonna get this down. Let's see it. Let's put this snap on to work. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Man, gotta get a position. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. The snap won't hold it in there. Ready? Here we yep. go again. Yeah. Man, don't just mark this, man. You gotta start eating, man. <laughs> All right, we almost there. Yeah, we almost there. A little bit more. All right, All right. Here we go. Bingo. Wait right there. Bingo. Man, we need to look at that, man. What you mean? Oh man, I'm looking from this side. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, we just about. To, I turned just a little bit on the safe side. There we go. All right, all right. This is pretty impressive because at the same time, this teaches us just how strong this uh, snap-on uh, ratchet is. And this is the old ones, all right. So now, snap-on doesn't say USA no more. If you notice, mine is an older ratchet, and it says USA. If it didn't say that, I don't know if I could trust it. I, I just don't know. They, they really, the tools are really kind of garbage, garbagey right now. But uh, this is the USA brand and it held really well. It goes to show you how much torque is on these bolts. And if you don't put it that much torque, these bolts will loosen up and mess that bearing up again. So uh, that was cool. Remember, 147 foot pounds and then 180 degrees or 200 newton meters and it's still another 180 degrees all right we can take our screwdriver from out of there that is cool and we're going to put this tie on and we'll be right back all right guys here's an easy way of putting the tie on if you don't want to get down right now i'm sitting down and what i'm doing is going to line it up i see my bolt between it where it's got to go and i'm going to use both my hands to pick up the tire Put it on, see, being that because I'm sitting down, I'm not putting any kind of stress on my back. Then I'm gonna take my 17 millimeter socket, stick one of the bolts in there. And just get that going on by a few threads. Okay, now I know that's up there. Go ahead and put the other four in. Now we go ahead and go tighten them up. 
And when you tighten it up, you want to go like in a star pattern. You don't want to tighten up around like this because you can put the wheel on crooked. So you want to, what you do, bring one in. Now go over here and then you're going to, go to tighten it from here. Just like that. Alright, done. Look at that. Shake that wheel. That wheel ain't moving nowhere. That is solid. That is a perfect job done. Turn the wheel a little bit. You want to make sure your backing plate hasn't been bent while reinstalling it because it's been scraping right now. And also you can tell our brakes aren't squealing or, or grinding up against it. We've got something wrong in there. Everything is great. Alright, we're going to let this car down and we'll be right back. And that's how you replace the help the wheel hub bear assembly <laughs> assembly remember if you don't talk if you don't talk it right you will you will have the same problem again talk what right if you don't talk the axle bolt right okay. you will have the same problem once again if you have any questions or comments please leave them below or contact Tim at Tim at Astro Auto Repairs. Repairs. Dot com. Uh, <laughs> dot com. You get it. You get yeah. it. You almost there. I'm Marcus from Astro Auto Repairs. If we can't repair it, nobody can.